one of the most powerful models that I, I actually know in uh, neurosemantics. This is covered in master's practitioner. This is covered in the ACMC in depth. And you will also be uh, coach on this uh, different uh, hats that you will play as a coach. Now you see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine roles as a coach or hats that you have to put as a coach. <coughs> now let's see. This axis is a motivation or motivational axis. You have to look at change. If you're because self-actualization is all about change. Coaching is all about change. If you have to change someone or if you have to take them through the process of change, then you have to understand the dynamic of how people get motivated to actually do something. And there are meta programs involved, in which we will cover with later on. But as a coach, you've got to put on the head of a challenger. A challenger is someone who will try to put pain in your current situation and say, do you like it? Do you want to spend the rest, I mean, another five years staying this way? <laughs> you love this? It sucks, right? Good. I think you I think you want to remain this way for another five years. You say, no, I don't want to. I don't believe you. That kind of challenging. So that's the kind of coach we, we are playing when you're doing a challenger's role. So at the ACMC level, this is done very well. Okay, I mean, you, you will be taught on how to coach people on this. Um, on the other end of the axis, end of the continuum, we have the awakener. This is more of a feminine kind of... Uh, Energy. Here yeah. is more like a guy kind of energy. <laughs> yeah, that's something, you know, the critical parent and the nurturing parent types. Yeah. So, I mean, both are necessary. Yeah. Okay? So, sometimes you have to play that role in order to get someone for, to move their ass from where they're actually sitting, you know. And awakening is towards, you know, building and making them, you know, look towards the future and let their eyes lit up to the possibilities they have. So, as an awakener, you know. Uh, uh, I mean, as a coach, you also play the role of an awakener. Now, without this, you can't let them go to the next axis, which is the decision axis. Because unless people get motivated, how can you let them take action? Isn't it? Very difficult. Someone has to. Sometimes you only take action. You see, uh, let me ask you, when do you take action? Is it because of something that you're looking forward to, or is it because of the pain? Usually, which one motivates you more? As for me, it's pain. The pain, usually, pain. usually the pain. Yeah. For me, it's pain. usually the pain. Mm -hmm. But there are people you know, who usually, use, on the other end, who can also do that. But I find myself in the pain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know about you. Mm. How about you all? Yeah. Uh, the pain. It's usually the pain. Is, you know, you are uncomfortable in a certain position, so uh, you need to change that state. So uncomfortable. Is so the method, the driving meta program in this case. Right, the way the perceptual filter will be, uh, 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 what do you call, it? away from method program. It's an away from method program. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, there's a lot of things we can actually spend time on when I'm talking about this because there are method programs involved. Let's say away from is a method program. As a coach, you might have uh, one of these as your. Let's say you are, a, you could be uh, towards method program, and the person you coach is away from. So you need to know whether this person gets motivated. By pain or by yeah. pleasure. By pleasure. Push yeah. By stick or carrot. Mm -hmm. So once you get this done and you get them through the coaching process by questioning them and you know exploring their matrix, then you go to the next axis, which is the decision axis, which is for them to take action. Now the first role you play there is is a probe. You probe them and you let them explore, you let them reflect before they uh, actually uh, you let them take action. Okay, so this is the prover's role. On the other hand, the other one is a provoker role. I mean, it's almost like you're playing these two roles at the same time because it's while you're actually coaching this, all things will be at the same time running parallelly because you're motivating, motivating them for what? For decision, right? 
So you'll be playing this course, uh, challenge, challenging role, awakening role, and probing and provoker, provoker role at the same time. So probing is mostly to check out if they really want this. Are you sure you want this? Okay. And let them, you question them more about their goals, their outcomes, and uh, let them play it in their heads. Let them reflect on it. Why do you want this? Why? Why do you want this? Are you sure you want this? Are you sure you want to get into this business? Is this the line for you? So this person begins to question himself, right? And then the provoker role. Here you can you can again like almost challenge them, provoke them. I don't think you have you have it in you to do it. I don't think you have it in you to do it. The person will say, "Damn it! Let me do it. I can do it. I'll show you." That's when, this is when you do the provoker role. Here usually you play the feminine kind of role, here provoking with like masculine kind of role. Um, you're like more into the face, <laughs> more into the face and provoking them. And that's why I said yesterday, it's about being ruthlessly compassionate. And we did that yesterday too. You've got to be ruthless, but very compassionate. From a, from a standpoint of being compassionate, you know, being ruthless because you want to see them change. You want to move, let them move from that place to the other place because they're not willing to, you know, uh, just be lying to themselves, you know, self-deception going on and fooling themselves many times. Mm -hmm. So you've got to play these roles too. And uh, the next is the other one, the creation stage. This is once everything is all in place and we're ready and we say, yes, I'm in. Let's do it. Let's do it. And that's when you play the role of co-creator. As a coach, you play the role of co-creator because uh, the person has to come up with his own plans mm -hmm. from his own creative ideas, use his own resources, internal spirit, internal resources, internal belief system, internal values, internal purpose and direction, whatever it is that they're headed, they have to come up with that. So they have to internally reference themselves. They rely on their internal resources. No, no, that, 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 other people. Here it's all about co-creation about. So this is the internal game we play first. Before we play the external game, we have to play the internal game first. Any building, for example, this 12th Avenue building that you see right here. Do you think it just, just came about? No, somebody played that game in his head, in his bedroom, probably, or at a cafe coffee day somewhere, or maybe sitting there, and I need to have a club, I need to have a hotel on this road, you know, I need to, uh, that will bring business, blah, blah, blah. Something was played out in the head, inside, and then a game plan was made, and a plan, out, plan was laid, and after some time, a blueprint was made, right? So this is the internal game rules and games of how you will play the game of change. So here you facilitate as a coach to co-create, help them to co-create the plan. Next is actually actualizing it in the real world. This is the, the knowing part and the actually game plan there, but here is the actual doing part. This is when you start doing, implement, I mean, trying to do things, the plan that was uh, actually laid out here. The final uh, axis there is the solidification stage. Solidification stage is where you play the role of a reinforcer or a tester. Now you're playing again a feminine kind of and a masculine kind of role. As a reinforcer you say, yeah, come on, you're good at it. Come on, you're making baby steps. You know, at every baby steps and all those you know, leaps that they've taken from here to there, next, next, and before, the, you know, you're watching them as a coach through those three months or six months or nine months process that you've been coaching them to, to go to that level, you've been there with them. So you're kind of encouraging them on the sideline side, side and saying, yeah, you're clapping your hands and saying, yeah, you're doing good, come on. That's what we do in, at the reinforcer stage. But also, we also play the role of a tester, which is mismatching. What's not working? What did we miss out? 
I think this was supposed to be this way, and we did it this way. Uh, I think this needs to be changed, or we need to update this now. So it's kind of a mismatch you you do. You're looking for something that has um, that has changed with the times, or perhaps, or certain needs to be certain need, things need to be updated, or if certain things are not followed the way it was. So you're looking with a mismatching eyes to see if things are actually carried out accordingly. All right. If there are certain updates to be done, so you have this mismatching lines. Basically, all of these are dri driven by meta programs, which we will discuss today. And as in the center, we play the role of a facilitator, not an expert, not uh, a, not a guru, mm -hmm. not a consultant, but a facilitator. Facilitator with powerful precision questions, meta questions that, uh, that that help you tap the frames that are inside the matrix of self, others, whatever it is, so that you can actually take them through this whole axis of change. So it's a very powerful model. You can always use this uh, during your coaching process, even in sales. This is about change. It's about from A to B. So you can even use this for sales. Think about it properly. If you have to get someone motivated, help make them take decision, usually you've got to know what, what is motivating them. The other person, the other person, prospect sitting at the other end of the table, what is he motivated upon? Is he motivated by pain? And usually, yeah, pain is usually one of the, you know, uh, major uh, decision, uh, you know, reason for making decisions. Mm -hmm. So you can rely on that as well. So you can play both the games. Instead of saying, you know, ah, oh, you'll do this, you'll be able to do this, you'll be, that's fine, but what about the other pain of, you know, you're getting old. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you're getting old now. You have this. You have to find out all the weaknesses possible for that person, you know? And if you go with that person, let's say, you're working with me, uh, and if you're not working with me, <laughs> what will happen? The cost that they're going to pay. Maybe, maybe cheaper, all right? In the lesson, the kind of cost in the long run they're gonna pay will be much more than investing in me. So pain is something that really needs to be looked into when you are selling. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we think that this side is the thing that we need to do, but see, if your meta program, if your perceptual filter is more comfortable here, see, you might be driven by pain. However, while presenting, let's say during sales, which one is more comfortable? That's another thing. You're getting it? Are you more comfortable talking about the aspects of having your product, your service, or are you tough enough to put them on the spot? That's another thing. Yeah, I'm more comfortable with this full this part, interaction right? thing. Yeah. And that's when I get in my flow state yeah. to be like, look at what you could do, how you yeah. could achieve it, and all yeah. that. And this tends to work with a certain type Seven. of client, like high net worth individuals that really want to do something to give back. But this strategy well, works well. for corporates. Yeah. Because you're selling to a different person, they're just doing a job, right? But they don't want to get their ass kicked by screwing up, with, you know, they're like, so you kind of like, well, this is a new government regulation and there are all these penalties if you don't do X, Y, Z, we can help you. So this is where we get good traction with corporates, but this is where I get better traction with H and I's when you tap, inspire them. You know. So <coughs> you can use this and then take them through this process. So main thing is that motivational access is a big challenge. Yeah. So you've got to learn to play both the roles comfortably. 